There's no sign of them. Move on. Glad to see Ishban kept his word, sir. Not half as glad as I am, Your Grace. Well, we kept our word too. And now Toth has had his head start and he's fair game. Which way do they go? To the north, but I would be careful, Sir Hans. Fear not, Your Grace. I have twice as many men as he. <laughs> well, I won't keep you any longer. I'm sure the two of you have a lot to say to each other. Let's go! All right, Father. I am. They treated me quite decently. Although they did steal my horse, so I'll have to go back on foot. What about my horse? It looks like it's all over. Not by a long shot. It won't be over until we get this mess cleared up. And catch that bastard. How could we let him go? Would you rather we killed him? Even if it meant Lady Stephanie and I died too? No, of course not. But what was to stop us from killing him after the exchange? Honor? Honor? If the word of honor of a nobleman could not be trusted, then he would never have agreed to the exchange. And where's the honor in abandoning your son? Hmm. You know how it is. We were young. It happened. And I couldn't marry a commoner. Then your father, I mean Martin, came along and took care of both of you. Well, he knew it. What? That I was your father? Certainly. He was a great man. He took you as his own. And I always kept an eye on you. Of that you can be sure. I know so little about his past. He told you nothing. Oddly enough, even though you don't have his blood, you're very like him. When he was around your age, he became bored of his trade and set out to see the world. He lived through many adventures, even fought in a war. In a war? Yes, in Poland, I believe. And I don't think he cared much for it. That's why he wanted me to stay at home. He spent some time in Prague, then settled in Kuttenberg. But it seems he quarreled with someone there and finally ended up here. You know the rest. I loved him, but even so, uh, I somehow always had a feeling I didn't quite fit in. <clears throat> it was in your blood, I suppose. <laughs> I lost the one thing I had left from him. Your sword. Ah. The sword. It's not my sword. It's yours. How are you sort? For a moment there, it was so near, yet so far. Oh, well, it can't be helped. It was almost within my grasp, but... Just then I had something else on my mind. Well, I think we may yet have a chance to get it back. This business with Toth is not yet over, unfortunately. Well, that's a chance I'd welcome. Not just to get the sword, but that bastard Istvan too. And then I'll find that German whore son who torched Scalitz, and I'll slay him with it. I'll never forget his face. Or his name. Mark Wart von Aulitz. Those are noble intentions, son. But don't forget, there are other things in this world that are worth so living I wonder, are for. We, it, will we fight him and kill him in next round? you. I hope so. Blue skies overhead, green grass underfoot, beautiful girls, good wine, a few good friends, and a fine steed under your backside. Those are things worth living for. Though I can't deny that swine who killed your mother must pay for what he did. But it's better not to dwell too much on that at the cost of those other things.
On the subject of steeds, I think we'll have to ride like the Knights Templar. How's that? Two up. One day I'll tell you how they got their seal. You can take the front. It's like I always imagined it would be, teaching my boy to ride. Although it would be better if you were a little smaller. My word, it's all go today, isn't it? I wonder who this is. I think I know. It's Margrave Jobst. The king's cousin? I wonder what he wants. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Nice. Game's not over yet? with the uh, <laughs> text at the bottom. Come now. You know who sired you. That doesn't matter now. I got the Yohanka trial going. I miss you, Amar. I miss you very much. You'll be fine. We're proud of you. For what? I let you down. I, I lost the sword. I let that bastard get away. Don't be so hard on yourself. There was nothing you could have done to save us. When someone has to live and carry the torch, that's for the sword. It's just a thing. You didn't want me fighting. Now look at me. Standing up to evil isn't the same as sowing its seeds. We did what was right. No, not at all. It's like it's such a pretty scene right there. I have to leave you now. Oh, please. You know I can't stay. Will I ever see you again? God knows. Make her proud. were you dreaming about? I couldn't wake you, and it's well past dawn. Sir Radzik wants you at the upper castle. The lords are in council with Yobst. Right. I'll go straight away. Well, I got some fancy pants. What is it? It's just... I don't know how to address you anymore. All of a sudden, you're Sir Radzig's son, hobnobbing with lords and ladies. And here's me, as common as muck. Oh, give over, you idiot. Do I look like a lord to you? Not really. You're as much a lord as I am a nun. And I've never looked good in a habit. 
Get out of here. Or I'll have you clapped in the stocks. <laughs> I'm in a private area. I was in here. So you can explore if you want before you end it. Like... It's like if I talk to Sir Hans then, would I be able to do the DLC? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna guess that he's at the castle. Not here. Find it. I can't do it. That was my bad, and I should have done it earlier. Are you going to the meeting with Margrave Jobst as well? I am. What about Istvan? I assume that we didn't catch him? No. Because if we had, you'd be the first one to know. Have no fear. We'll get him eventually. I hope you're right. Anyway, let's go and see what Jobst wants from us. Uh, I wouldn't. No, I don't know. Maybe I can't. It might be too late. My lords. Christ's blessings on you all. And on you, Lord Capon. And this is my son, Henry. I didn't know you had a son, Sir Redzig. It came as a bit of a surprise to young Henry, too. To this. <laughs> this gentleman here is John II of Liechtenstein, a member of my council. I'm honored, gentlemen. Come join us. Our grave Jobs was just about to tell us the reason for his visit. Your Grace. I'm sure we're all agreed, Your Graces, that all this unrest must come to an end. This kingdom needs a king. Question is, which king? Oh, look for treasure chests? My yeah. My cousin, Wenceslas IV, who is being held in captivity. I have to confess, my lord, that your answer surprises me a little. If I'm correctly informed until recently, you sided with your other cousin, Sigismund. That I cannot deny, and I have always stated my position plainly. But times have changed. How have they changed, Your Grace? Sir, there is one thing on which we undoubtedly concur. That King Wenceslas, unfortunately, did not inherit his father's gift for governing. Sadly, his failures have cost Bohemia, the nobles, and our whole Luxembourg family a great deal of money and effort. How did the king let it go so far, damn it? It's in his temperament. He cares only for wine, women, and the hunt. A king, in fact, who never wanted to be king. Then why didn't he just let his brother have the crown? <laughs> Young sir, the crown weighs heavy when there are duties to be performed. But to surrender it means giving up great privileges, too. But he did surrender power to his brother. When things started getting out of hand, Wenceslas appealed to Sigismund for help in restoring order. What you're saying, Wenceslas has invited him here? This is starting to make my head spin. <laughs> Actually, it makes sense when you think about it. Sigismund wanted to re-establish the power of the whole House of Luxembourg. He thought if he helped Wenceslas win the imperial crown, 
In return, his brother would help him become the king of the Romans and leave the actual reign of Bohemia and the empire to him. Sigismund would govern while Wenceslas could carry on doing what he was best at, enjoying the life of the imperial court. Why wasn't Wenceslas crowned Holy Roman Emperor long ago? He was already elected king of the Romans. All he had to do was go and let the Pope put the damn imperial crown on his head. Who knows? Maybe he'd prefer hunting and consorting with bathhouse wenches to spending time with the Pope. Well, so would I, I must admit. <laughs> Sigismund's plan seemed sound enough, but it didn't quite work out, did it? It worked for a while. He and his brother reached an agreement. Sigismund took over administration of the kingdom and began planning Wenceslas's journey to Rome for the imperial coronation. But then Wenceslas realized he would just be a puppet with a crown. I must say, Margrave Jobst. Wenceslas and Prokop behave rather like naughty children in need of a good clout about the ears. Sigismund would agree. He was already planning his rule of Bohemia, and all of a sudden, the rug was pulled from under him. I'd say he lost his patience and decided he'd drag Wenceslas to the coronation, kicking and screaming if he had to. Just like a naughty child, as you say. So he abducted him and your brother Prokop too, if I heard correctly. Correct. And you helped him do it, if I heard correctly. Yes, your graces, it's true. I was there when Sigismund abducted Prokop. I thought everything could somehow be settled, that we could make my brother see sense. But Sigismund just wanted to put an end to the dispute once and for all, whatever the cost. There was nothing I could do to stop him. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Ah. The worst of it is that it was all for nothing. Instead of putting a stop to the revolt, it escalated it, and the result is this chaos we have today. That's true enough, sir. But I must admit now, I'm not sure what your position is. The king is incompetent, but we must protect him. The simple truth, gentlemen, is that for all of Wenceslas's faults, we have no one else. So we'll have to make do with his idleness. Ugh. People like him, though. Ugh. But what can we do now? Sigismund has the League of Lords behind him. Otto von Bergolf, Heinrich von Rosenberg... The situation has gotten completely out of control. Now even the nobles of the League of Lords are realizing that Sigismund wasn't the right choice. So now Bergolf is on your side. Are we to assemble an army together with him and face Sigismund on the field of battle? We're not in Hungary now. Such affairs may be settled elegantly, without unnecessary hostilities or expenses. I have negotiated an alliance with the Hungarian bishops, the Polish, and of course the Czech nobility, against Sigismund. Every day he is losing the ground under his feet, and that's why I need your help too. What kind of help, though? Sigismund has a massive army, and Rosenberg, Burghoff, and Prague are behind him. Do you have an army you could face him with? But that's not what I mean at all. There's been a revolt against Sigismund in Hungary. <laughs> Partly due to my efforts. And now he'll have to choose whether he wants to gain the Bohemian crown, which is a very risky enterprise, or hold on to the Hungarian one. He can't have both. And there's a tough struggle awaiting him in Hungary. I'm not sure he'll win, and Rosenberg and Berghoff know it too. They're not stupid. If the Bohemian nobility stands together, they will turn. We are men of little consequence, Margrave. Radzig here lost everything because of his alliance with Wenceslas. Sir Divish came within a hair of the same fate. Even Ratte is defenseless against Sigismund and the League of Lords. What's more, Your Grace, King Wenceslas languishes in captivity in Vienna. He can't rule too well from there. And what do you propose? To sit with your arms folded till the Bohemian lands are turned to ashes like scarlets? We have to put a stop to this senseless war! And do you know, sir, what the true position of the League of Lords is? I'm not on the best of terms with them at this moment, so you'll have to ask them yourselves. Yes. 
Why not? I'll go and visit Burgov at his castle and we'll see what he tells me. <laughs> you know, that's not such a bad idea, young sir. True. Though a little risky. I doubt Burgoff would harm a blue-blooded envoy. And you can find out what he has to say about developments and what the League of Lords is planning. Then we'll decide what to do next. I'll help you compose a letter to him. I'd like Henry to come with me. Why not? He's proven himself an able investigator, and he'll also be a good bodyguard if anything should happen. And I'll send Sir John here to Kutenberg to be my eyes and ears there. I believe both your reports will help us get a better grip on the situation. When can you set out? Just as soon as I've packed my things. Excellent. Margrave Jobst and I will draft the letter. Get ready, and we'll meet back here. I expect it would be best to write it in your name as Lord of Lipa. Why so, Margrave? What I mean, I can probably wander around and get some like chests and stuff, but is there really a point at this point in the game? I don't know. They stand on Liberty's right and absolutely truthful. But I've heard too much about him already. Hmm, likewise. But I do feel he's the one with the best chance to put things right. Well, we'll see what we learn from Burgov. If the League of Lords stands with Sigismund, then our chances pale, in spite of everything the Alps said. We shall see. We shall see. So, it looks like you're off on a mission. I am? Yes. I can't wait. I don't want to dampen I can't your take spirits, off my, my boy, either. but watch out. These are evil times, and who knows what can happen along the way. Not to mention that Bergov is no saint. Don't worry. I know. You've shown you can fend for yourself, but do take care. You'll be traveling as Lord Capon's bodyguard. You'll be there to make sure nothing untoward happens to him. Keep your eyes peeled and your ears wide open. What Burgoff tells you is one thing, but what you see may be quite another. Rest assured, Father. And don't get embroiled in anything else. Just hand over the letter, hear out his reply, and return. Yes. Very well. Bergov is at Trotsky Castle. I'm not very talkative right now. I think you'll right find now. it quite an eye-opener. It's one of the finest castles in the land. It's three days' ride from here, so unless you hit a snag along the way, you'll be back soon enough. Any questions? I'm getting a bit lost in the Luxembourg lineage. It all seems a bit too tangled. The Luxembourgs have ruled the Empire and Bohemia for almost a hundred years now. Emperor Charles brought this land to prominence. When he was in power... Things had never been so good. Wenceslas and Sigismund are his sons, but by different mothers. Jobst and Prokop are their cousins. They were entrusted with governing Moravia. But instead, they've been in a bitter armed feud for years. And now Sigismund's fallen out with Wenceslas. Wenceslas also had another brother, the youngest, John of Gerlitz, who was most probably poisoned. They seem like a hot-blooded lot. It's hard to keep up with their affairs since they tend to change their alliances from one day to the next. Okay, Jobst? Who is he really, this Jobst? The cousin of King Wenceslas. He's the Margrave of Moravia. I admit I don't know what to make of him myself. Until recently, he was allied with the League of Lords. For a time, he even served Rupert of the Palatinate against the King. And now suddenly, he's reversed his position. I don't know what led him to do it, and one can't help being suspicious. It's best to keep a watchful eye on him, but he really is the leader of the resistance against Sigismund these days. We'll just have to see how it all turns out. I'm a bit concerned so many people seem to think so little of King Wenceslas. You knew him, didn't you? What's he really yeah. like? Yeah, probably what I'll have to do. Well, I was hoping to get all the no DLCs, but to that question. I've already done him before He certainly in the makes past. a great hunting and drinking companion, but he can be very fiery and impetuous when things don't go how he'd like them. He never had much of a head for high office. He finds it tiresome. But once a man's grasped the scepter, it's hard to let it go again. You can't just abscond. You've seen for yourself what happens when he disappears for a few months. Better a bad but legitimate king than a bloody war over the throne. Prokop? Who is this Prokop that Yob spoke of? Yob's brother, the king's cousin. He and Yob's warred over Moravian supremacy for years. 
Then they were allies for a while, betrayed Wenceslas, and sided with Rupert of the Palatinate. But after Sigismund abducted Wenceslas, Prokop fomented a revolt against him, and Sigismund had him captured. Politics, <laughs> make of it what you will. I, for one, can't make head or tail of it most of the time. I think it's just messed up. It's all messed up. League of Lords. The League of Lords and that Burgoff we're off to see. Who are they exactly? The Lords of the Powerful Houses. Heinrich of Rosenberg, Otto of Burgoff, Heinrich of Raditz, and others. They're unhappy with the way their influence declined after Wenceslas surrounded himself with the lesser orders of nobility. They abducted the king years ago and made him bow to their will. They got away with it that time, and now they've joined forces with Sigismund and done it again. But now it seems that Sigismund's behavior is starting to rub them up the wrong way. So they may well be thinking twice. We'll see what Burgoff has to say. I don't know all that much about Sigismund. He's the king's younger brother and king of Hungary in his own right. Seven years ago, he led a crusade against the Turks and was defeated at Nicopolis. Some say it was due to the recklessness of the French knights, most of whom were mercilessly slaughtered. Sigismund is ambitious and capable. He might well make a better ruler than Wenceslas, but he's arrogant and to our misfortune, brutal. Not long ago, he himself was held captive by the Hungarian nobility. They dislike him as much as some of the Czech and German noblemen do his brother Wenceslas. Ironically, Wenceslas joined forces with Jobst to liberate him. And now this is how Sigismund repays his brother. There's no doubt about it. God does move in mysterious ways. Rupert. Rupert of the Palatinate. That's a name I hadn't heard before today. Rupert is the Prince Elector of the Palatinate. What's a Prince Elector? The Prince Electors are dignitaries of the Holy Roman Empire who have the right to elect the King of the Romans, who would then be crowned Holy Roman Emperor by the Pope. Rupert took the title for himself with the help of three other Prince Electors, even though Wenceslas had already been appointed. Some of the nobility in the Empire recognized Rupert's claim, but when he went to Rome to be crowned Emperor, it turned into a fiasco. Now he's doing his utmost to get Wenceslas to acknowledge him, but so far without success. So, now we have two kings of the Romans. Jops sided with Sigismund for a while, but now he switched allegiance. He seems that to do be, that maybe. quite a lot. John of Liechtenstein. That young man, Sir John of Liechtenstein, why is he here? The Liechtensteins are a powerful Austrian family with estates in Austria and Moravia. Sir John sits on Jobst Council. You have to get the Since letter the king's with being held captive leave? in Vienna, I suppose it makes sense to have a powerful Austrian house as allies. It could be very useful. That's about all. Very well. Take the letter from Sir Hanush. And good luck, son. Okay. Got the I believe we have written it well, gentlemen. Without a doubt. No one could deduce from this whether we are Sigismund's allies or foes. <laughs> I must travel back to Brno now, but soon I will go to Brandenburg and I will stop here on the way back. By then, Sir Capon should be back and we can discuss how to proceed. Right. Before you leave, my lord, there is one thing that gives me no rest. Why did Sigismund come as a foe? It makes no sense. If I may, sir, I think I can explain. Oh, please enlighten us, young sir. I live not far from Hungary where Sigismund reigns. It is a savage country, and the constant war with the Turks has hardened the people. They need a monarch with an iron hand. So when Sigismund felt the wind of revolt, he reacted as he would at home. Only what works on the Hungarian nobles does not work here in Bohemia. Bringing order is one thing, but slaughtering and pillaging with a horde of barbarians, quite another. Uh, what purpose does that serve? But Sigismund did give the Bohemian nobles a chance to take his side. It was only when they refused his ultimatum that he lost patience and took to the sword. As for the barbarians, 
He could afford nothing better. The Hungarian nobility would gain nothing from joining his campaign in Bohemia. He didn't have enough coin for a regular army, and so he recruited the Cumans. What he does not pay them, they make up for in plunder. But in the end, he didn't have enough to even satisfy the Cumans. That's why he raided Gutenberg and Scarlets. He wanted the silver. That makes sense. My lords, how's the letter coming along? It's done. Then we can be on our way. Now remember what we said, boy. All you have to do is deliver the letter, listen to the answer, and come back here. Don't provoke Burgoff in any way. Provoke? Me? Yeah. <laughs> Never, Uncle. We'll be back in a few days. Farewell, Your Graces. Come, Henry, my men are waiting. I wish you Godspeed. Completing the main storyline. If you'd like, you can still embark on a quest and activities and just wander around the world. Or you can just end the game. Yeah, because I don't... I mean, I got some side quests, but side Trump, quests aren't uh, my... Man, must have been the courtyard. We can get going. Wasn't my... Uh, I didn't want to try... I didn't mean to really do them all. Um, I've done them before. Um, I wanted to go through the main story and do a lot of the game. Um, I must have messed up for the DLC, I think. But other than that... I think we got most of it. I think we'll just end it. So, can we set off now, Henry? Yep. Of course. I can't wait. So, to horse. The Lord of Burgov is bound to be waiting as eagerly. Now I have to wait several months to be able to play the next one. Ah! What were you doing? Don't walk into my horse. Can't wait to see what they do with uh, the. What about Rodzi? With the, all the, the extra developers. Owning up to you the whole time. He explained it. All will be well, I think. Glad to hear it. It's far more acceptable for a nobleman to befriend a noble bastard than a blacksmith's son. Mind you, don't come to blows with a blacksmith, my young lord. What do you think about Sir Yobst and his plan? Well, I admit all the scheming has me a little lost. I thought Sigismund was the devil, Wenceslas a martyr, those on his side the heroes, and those against him the villain. I believe we'd rescue the king and all would be well again, but now it looks a lot more complicated. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> is. I didn't expect the noble lords to be as noble as the angels. But I'm on a mount this time. <laughs> such a sewer. They behave like children. I can't fathom how, after all this backstabbing, they're somehow still on speaking terms. I don't know either. The beggar's belief. I thought that other guy was coming with us. Did you know that King Wenceslas is such a... such a... Feckless drunkard? Not really. And to be honest, I'm not sure I wanted to know. I slept better believing my fate was watched over by a wise and powerful monarch. So did I. What a dismal world when you can't keep trust in your own king. On the other hand, times were better with him here than with him gone. Isn't that the truth? What do you think of Sigismund? If I were him, I'd have had enough of my brother even sooner. But he's a monster. Look at what those hordes of his are getting up to here. What he did in Scalitz. True enough. On the other hand, if Wenceslas and Prokop hadn't double-crossed him, none of this would have happened. No one forced him to burn Scalitz. That's a fact. But he couldn't let him shit all over him either. Not that I'm defending him. He's a weasel. 
No doubt about that. <laughs> Do you know anything about Prokop? <laughs> oh no! Sir Hanish could tell you a thing or two about him. Why? Last winter, a certain Sir Jan Sokol of Lamberg, a well-known knight, or robber baron to some, tried to occupy the city of Iglau, which was on the orders of none other what than... What the hell, Pro Internet? And what has that got to do with Hannes? Well, he was there with him. Of course, that's not something to brag about in front of Yops. And what was it all about? They wanted to occupy a city that was on the side of the League of Lords, but despite there being several hundred strong, they didn't take it. For one thing, they couldn't get past the Iglau women with their pitchforks and cauldrons of hot water. <laughs> I would never have thought of Sahanish as such a rebel. And have you heard anything about Rupert of the Palatinate? A little. And that Burgoff we're going to see, do you know anything about him? I haven't heard much good about him, but I have a feeling that some other nobles are quite in awe of him. Damn, internet went out. Damn it! All right. And what about the League of Lords? Wealthy, pompous. The king doesn't seem to like them much. He's chosen to let the lesser ranks of the nobility into his circle, men like your father. I admit I don't blame him one bit, but the lords weren't happy about their lost influence, so they put their foot down. If I were Wenceslas, I'd have let them hang after they abducted me the first time. But he gave them seats at the provincial council? Little wonder they're back at their old tricks. Frickin' internet. Very talkative there, are you? Hans, you're cutting me off. I did have a little bit more of a conversation while we're here. What are you trying to do to me? I think we're getting towards the end now. I remember this campsite up at the end of the map.
Find a dupe, but eat some. God bless you. What troubles you? Oh, what now? Well, young sir, what now? Shall we ride boldly forth to adventures new? I never took you for a romantic soul. But, as it happens, a romantic soul is just what I need by my side right now. What, here? Now? Aren't we leaving? Ah, that's just the thing. Here we are, about to ride off into the unknown. Well, who knows what fate has in store for us? What if we should fall as heroes on the battlefield? How could I depart this world with a quiet heart, never having known true love? I'm a little worried about you, sir. <laughs> Aren't you getting overheated inside that armour? Look, I can't just go off and get my head chopped off somewhere without first winning the heart of the girl I love. So are you going to help me or not? Okay. Well, affairs of the heart are what I do best. I'll be glad to help you. So what do you want me to do? You, Hal, shall be my messenger of love. You shall bear her a letter and a gift from a secret admirer. But why me? It's not like you to be bashful, Sir Hans. You can just go and tell her, um... Certainly not. Carolina is different to the others. She was educated in a convent and needs to be handled with kid gloves. Romanced. I must court her secretly. It's the latest fashion in France. And who is this Carolina? The fairest maid that ever walked the earth. Carolina. The butcher's daughter. You must have noticed a divine creature in the marketplace. Unless you're more interested in barnyard animals. I, I don't know her. No, I don't know who you mean. Really? Maybe I'm right about your barnyard interests. <laughs> well, all the more wenches for me. Your task is simple. All you have to do is get hold of a necklace fine enough to grace her lovely neck. I did have one that I inherited from my great-grandmother. Unfortunately, not anymore. What happened to it? I lost it playing dice at the inn. There's the DLC. But you'll get it back for me. You're a smart lad. I'm sure you'll figure out a way. And I'll reward you handsomely. All right. Oh, all right, then. Is there something else I should know about this necklace? I lost it at dice in the Ledechko Tavern when I was there to see... Well, that's not important. So, some dice player from Ledechko won your grandmother's valuable necklace. Haven't you learned anything from losing to Zdena, the bathhouse wench? My great-grandmother's. And, as it happens, I have learned a trick or two. But that fellow has the luck of the devil. No doubt he'll still be sitting there, swindling other folk out of their hard-earned groschen. Oh, uh, what's the use? All right, all right. I'll go to Ledetsko, find this diabolical dice player and see what I can do. Though I'll probably lose my shirt to him. Well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Take care. Okay. All right, so let's start the DLC. But what we're going to do is... Uh, I'm going to end it here. Uh, Internet's acting wonky. Uh, so we'll continue this on Tuesday. And, uh, yeah, we're going to do... Uh, We're going to do the DLC. Sir Hans DLC. Good. I, I was hoping I could do this one. Uh, but we're going to hear again Tuesday. Same time as always, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll finish it Tuesday. If not, it could be Thursday. And uh, Friday stream, we're going to start Kona. Kona Broom. Or it's Kona 2, the second one. And uh, going all over after him. Awesome. And uh, yeah. Perfect. And then hopefully next Tuesday we'll start Star Wars Outlaws. Uh, but if you did enjoy this, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe. If you're on Twitch, please give me a follow. I'll see you all next time.